Okay, today I'm going to show you some techniques to um, take some different photos or um, images and transfer them onto a paper. So I have a very um, simple flyer that just came in the mail um, that I can use. Or I have a photo that I took. This is a favorite of mine, a tree. It was actually in spring. And uh, I have it printed in black and white off the printer. Or like this one is just um, an old calendar uh, that I tore all the images and so I can use that as a reference too. So I'm going to start. Um, so some of you might have done this in class is that we use graphite paper for transferring um, and we're going to make our own graphite paper. So all you really need is your number two pencil. Um, and if you have a printout, I'm going to start with this one. If you have a printout, it's real simple. You just turn it over right on that paper and you're just going to apply that graphite. Um, use the side of your pencil to apply. And you want even all the way across. Okay, so now I'm ready to get a nice piece of paper. Uh, I'm gonna transfer it onto this white piece of paper. And I'm just going to lay my image where I want it. So making sure that do I want the tree right in the center or do I want it kind of off to the side? Now I'm not going to trace, this is um, near where I live. I live right next to a cemetery. I'm not gonna trace all that. I'm just focusing on the tree that I really liked. So I'm gonna place that right here. And um, as far as images, I'm a big proponent when you're doing transferring to um, use images that you took yourself, but uh, you know, if, if that's not feasible, there's um, unsplash.com, which is a great place where artists take a ton of photos. So if you wanna print off some photos there, black and white is nice because you don't need the color on them. Um, so you can just print a black and white photo. Um, when you're ready, once you got your graphite on the back, you can tape your paper down uh, just so that if you get distracted or move around, you don't forget where that was. So I'm just gonna throw a little tiny piece of tape up to the top so that I don't have to hold it the entire time. Oops, as you can see, I just shifted it a little. And now I'm ready to start just outlining what I want and where what lines I wanna keep and put onto my next paper. You can just peek underneath and make sure it's transferring. You'll see it's transferring really light, so you, you're, you're not getting it real heavy, but it's enough that you're making your own carbon paper, which is a great way to get an image. Uh, and sometimes just some, as an artist, just getting a, uh, an outline of an image really helps with get it, giving you the confidence to get started, giving you an idea of maybe what you want to paint, um, and you can keep going further. The more you trace, the more your memory is remembering the, you know, the shapes and the idea behind the piece. So um, I really encourage the idea of transferring. Again, the, if you're going to be you know, selling your work in the future, it's good to go use your own photography and, you know, use your drawing skills in the future. But since we are in middle school, we can do some tra tracing transfers. So you can see I'm actually just outlining the actual white here. I'm not even outlining the, the tree branches. I've decided just to give myself the negative space versus the positive space up here. Whereas here I'm doing the outline of the tree. So whatever you choose, just remember what you're outlining. And remember too, to just peek and see where you are in that transfer. And if your line is really light and you want to have more um, it to, it's not transferring right, maybe you need to go back and just give your uh, the back of your paper a little bit more of the pencil. Um, just also a little, be careful if you have lines in your table, you don't want to pick that All right, I think I'm pretty happy. This is a really good outline to get me started. 
and to get created off of that. So now I'm going to move on to if you get yourself um, something like this, um, you can't really put the graphite on the back of this. It's a little th too thick of paper. So like something like a magazine is going to be really hard. So instead of putting on the, the graphite on the back, you're actually creating uh, some graphite paper by just using a, like just a simple, a real inexpensive piece of paper or printer paper. And you're doing the same thing. I most likely am going to have to sharpen my pencil here uh, because I need to get as much graphite that I can out. So you're just doing that same thing. Um, again, being, you might need, a, don't have texture. You can see I have a lot of texture on my, where I work in my studio. So you don't want to pick up too much texture. You want it to be nice and smooth. So maybe putting a few more pieces of paper underneath so that it's nice and smooth. And you're just going to get a nice piece of graphite paper here. Um, so you can also not go so big um, and you can do it on smaller pieces of paper, but you can also do it on uh, tracing paper too. So you can get yourself, make your own graphite paper by using tracing paper and just putting your graphite right on top. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for this tracing paper piece that's a little smaller and I'm going to do it on this large piece of paper. Okay, so our last piece that we're doing is the newspaper and using just something that came in the mail that maybe I can reuse and get inspired. So I actually can't find my scissors in my studio, so I just tore out um, some things that inspired me. A piece of cake and some chocolate chip cookies, chips ahoy. Um, so I'm feeling a little, feeling a little sugar-like today, I guess. Anyway, so I'm going to take that graphite paper that I put on tracing paper. Again, this could just be a regular piece of paper too, um, but it's nice and small because I'm using some small things, so I don't need to be putting graphite on a huge surface. Um, so again, paper that graphite facing down, tape that down so it doesn't move, and then put your images over the top. So and tape those down, being careful not to cover your images that you got. And I am ready to just start tracing. All right, so I am finished. I'm pretty happy with those. They're pretty light, but again, this is just a um, ability to transfer some images and it's just so that we can gain confidence and create some original pieces of art off of kind of a starting point. So wherever you are here, this is where you will start to decide what you want to do next. So you could continue to use pencil and define uh, define the lines with darker lines, go ring right over them, um, using some shadowing and value to create depth uh, and also enhance the background with things. <laughs> A beautiful sound and your heart comes on Listen close and you'll hear our song In each note there's a memory As life unfolds in a symphony For every moment sweeter than the last Sweeter than the last We'll stumble on some broken dreams We'll fix them up and build a swing All around us Alright, so now I'm gonna do some watercolor on my tree, on my uh, jellyfish, and my traced out food. So just using some simple watercolors just that I have around my studio. You can use anything. Um, you could also, you know, grind up some berries or uh, try to get some coffee grinds and make uh, some some paint out of different things like that. If you have uh, some food coloring at home, adding cornstarch can make a paint too to food coloring. Um, but hopefully you have a few, few 
um, a little bit of paint for adding color. But again, you can also, if you don't have paint, you can also use markers. Um, I could also color this in with a whole bunch of different um, pens too. So if I used a blue pen, a black pen, uh, ballpoint pens even, um, I can get really creative by just continuing to use line throughout. So you can see my texture that I created with just line here. If I change maybe a different color, um, so use what you've got, see what you can create. It's about the process of creating and um, just, you know, really kind of getting into the moment. Um, so I'm going to kind of, I'm just going to be really free with my painting and not think about the color and making it realistic. Uh, because sometimes I like to just like, I like to just let go and Maybe not think about it being a realistic My jellyfish I'm gonna use some different paints I'm gonna use some tube tube watercolors um, to paint with and I'm gonna use this little spray bottle of water some q-tips um, I've got also some oil pastel a white oil pastel and some stamps that I'm gonna use paint on so just a totally different way to kind of get some creative results and kind of loosen up. Uh, so I'm gonna start by just putting a little bit of color in my palette. I'm using just a top of a plastic container that I'm no longer using. All right, and I'm gonna start with my oil pastel and just kind of where maybe I don't wanna have color on my paper. Just kind of throughout. And then I'm going to get started. I'm going to mix colors here on my palette. Maybe some greens. I'm going to use quite a lot of water during this process. 